New York Times today. And this is what I was talking weeks ago, a religious fanaticism in Uganda. More than 500 people died in a church where doors and windows were nailed down. Two people responsible for it. I hope they were there in hell. Certain ex-Catholic priest and self-pronounced proclaimed nun that until Four years ago, she was still officially registered in Uganda as a prostitute. Uh, they invited over 500 people, 84 children, poured gasoline and burned themselves there, or they were killed. And when you read news like this, you don't want to be a member of any of the, these big religions. And I'm very happy that I'm a pagan. So I don't have an urge to kill anybody and uh, I'm very happy worshiping snakes and oak trees and thunder. I don't depend on killing. I have few axes to grind tonight. <laughs> Poland, Poles or Polacks, the way it's known, and uh, academia. I'm lucky, I'm Lithuanian, so I don't have to apologize for anything I say against Polacks. I have a moral and historical right to speak anything I want about them. <laughs> Especially today when um, we are breaking up into villages, and it is all right again to hate uh, anybody who is not from your village. And Poland has been a thorn in Lithuanian side for over 800 years. When Lithuanian kingdom was <clears throat> one of the prominent powers in Europe in the 12th, 13th century, there was no Poland yet. They were still living in the swampland outside of Lithuania there. And um, so one day they came out of the swamps and uh, their muddy feet stood up on their muddy feet and looked at Lithuania and said, oh, it looks pretty good there. Let's take, take, we'll take it over. We'll make it our own. They tried to claim Lithuania by stabbing in the back, betraying, poisoning, making entrances from the, through the back door, always through treachery. Today, after the Soviet Russia empire disintegrated, and Lithuania was the first one to secede from this unholy union there, uh, Lithuania is now an independent republic once more, and uh, United, it, Lithuania is a member of the United Nations, and over 160 nations recognize or have diplomatic relations with Lithuania except Poland. Poland refuses to recognize Lithuania as an independent country, and they still want to annex it as a province. Damn it, we don't speak the same language. We don't have the same history. Get off our backs, okay, Pollocks? Go back where you came from, the swamps of Poland. And leave our Lithuanian poets alone. Pollocks have no poets. But they had two Lithuanians there living in Poland who, besides writing in Lithuanian, wrote in Polish, too. That was their choice. And one of them is a uh, Nobel, Nobel Prize, uh, Czeslavas 
Malosius, uh, and they claim that he is Polish. And the other one is Miscavichus, which was state Lithuanian. And uh, since they have no poets of their own, so they're claiming our poets as their own because they wrote in Polish. So get off our backs, okay? You who are very politically correct, don't try to impeach me or anything because I'm immune to anything that's Polish. So cool it. Don't go to any committees and to the dean say, hey, he hates Polacks or something. He's not tolerant. Of course I'm not tolerant, so. Okay. <laughs> I feel better. I feel better getting that off my chest. Now, academia. <laughs> First night I spoke to you about um, people teaching you about Dante and <coughs> writing books about Dante. That's nothing comparing what's happening in academia. Uh, the world of academic, uh, academia is weird. But it is the catalog, right? Oh, gosh. This is the catalog. Uh, I received a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's a book. And uh, it prints the titles and the short synopsis of selected PhDs in the arts only. Uh, and in, the, in one year, PhDs in the arts only was 1,610. And these are only selected titles. Many of them didn't make into this book. In cinema studies, there were over 250 PhD thesis written. I counted, but after 250, I give up. It's sometimes difficult to tell what is cinema studies and what is uh, textile. Uh, imagine 250 people in one year receiving PhD in cinema studies. What are they doing today? <laughs> They're teaching other people to get PhDs, I presume. I think it's absurd. I'll read a few titles. Uh, uh, just for, not so much for fun, but for education here, enlightenment. Um, I read slowly, and uh, so you can understand what's happening here. Uh, and don't laugh when you hear those titles, because this is a serious stuff. This is PhD, <laughs> not BA, what you are getting here. So don't snicker. These are the few titles. This is all about cinema, of course. <coughs> Textual analysis, comma, ironic distances, and the Western critique of Hollywood cinema. Figured that one out. Textual analysis, ironic distances, and the Western critique of Hollywood cinema. 324 pages and no pictures. Next one, textual poetics in cinema, 283 pages, no pictures. They like word textual in these titles because I think they are these PhD smart ones uh, confuse cinema with textile business perhaps. I don't know. They should go back to NYU and study more. No. This is a simple one. Uh, it's another rehash actually. Uh, Ziga Bertov and the Man with a Movie Camera, 256 pages, no pictures. This, I, I would presume, about 200 dissertation on the same subject, on the same film. Ziga Bertov's movie camera. This is another selected one. Nice. Yep. You figured this one out. The impact of production circumstances on visual style. One, 340 pages with pictures. That's something. <laughs> Toward a theory of cinematic style, the remake 
a profound study, 342 pages, no pictures. You know, pictures indicate flippancy and in you are appealing to the masses, but if you are writing a PhD, you have to be serious. Pictures, stay away from pictures. And don't laugh, this is still PhD stuff. Uh, I think you should be more respectful of these people. And, uh, who knows, some of you might be taking a PhD someday. I know some of you will. <laughs> uh, this is a good one. They like long titles, because that's a study. Many professors read these, not many, perhaps two or three only. Readership of these papers <laughs> does not exceed three or four normally. The relationship between sensation seeking, as one word, sensa the relationship between sensation seeking and horror movie interest in and attendance. <laughs> the relationship between sensation seeking and horror movie interest and attendance. <laughs> Period. It doesn't make much sense, but I think it's good. It's good reading once you get to the end of it. Uh, oh, this is a Lulu. Um, I think the scribbler should get PhD just by writing it. Nobody should read it. No. I read it slowly. Uh, <clears throat> Listen carefully, it's a long title. Jerry Lewis and Marilyn Monroe, an ontological study and introduction to the social ideological project. Jerry Lewis and Marilyn Monroe, a narratological study and introduction to this social ideological project. This is only introduction, and let's see how long it is. Um, 367 pages, no pictures. This is an introduction. The real book will come out later. Uh, let's see, a few more. I'll stop. Uh, structuring absence in the fiction film. Structuring absence in the fiction film. I think there's something missing. A word is missing there or something. <laughs> 185 pages, no pictures. I, I'm ready to give up here. I have more, but uh, let me see it. I, I enjoy this. Uh, this is a simple one. Any one of you could write, perhaps. Identification of film theory, 200 pages with pictures. That's a simple one. Uh, now, this is in Greek. Let me get it straight. Anyone, anyone knows Greek here? A little bit, so please don't correct me. Uh, I don't have PhD in Greek. As you know, I'm a sixth grade dropout. This, this is the title, and then they give you explanation what the title means with the asterisk. Let me read it slowly. Prolegomenon to a phenomenology of film from a from problemo. <laughs> Forget it. I give up. Okay. <laughs> the explanation is this: that a critical introduction to the study of all possible appearances in the human appearance, during which. <laughs> Uh, during which consideration of objective reality and of purely subjective response are temporarily left out on the account of film. It's there. In black and white. Uh, okay, the last one. This is the last one. I had it. This is a good one, too. Sort of insane, but it's good. Uh, narrative voices and past tenses an American film. <laughs> Narrative voices and past tenses in American film. That's a good one. I love it. Uh, yes. Uh, we professors, we get books free. They stop sending me now. Because you are supposed to send back a little postcard saying how much you liked it. Uh, uh, this is a freebie. I loved it. I saved it. My house burned a couple of years back, so I, but I grabbed this book, and uh, <laughs> that's the only thing that I saved from the fire. It says, 
reflexivity in film from Don Quixote to John Luke Godard. Reflexivity in film from Don Quixote to John Luke Godard. It was written by a certain PhD guy. He had already a PhD. This is not his thesis. Uh, Robert Stamm, he is, of course, from NYU, Cinema Studies in NYU. What else? Of course. Uh, and uh, it's a good one. I didn't read it. Uh, 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 there's a film magazine here. Uh, uh, I don't know where the page I know it's in the book here. here. Yeah. It, uh, it has four pages. Uh, uh, a discourse on diagonal stress in cinema. Diagonal stress in cinema. I read or I tried to read it a few times, and um, I still don't know what the hell she's talking about there. I have been in this film world for half a century. I made four features, made some other films. And I have been teaching film here now for almost 30 years. I still don't know what diagonal stress in cinema is. It doesn't make me feel bad. I just don't give a damn about it. <laughs> and also, I don't give a damn about magazines that write stuff like that. There you go, diagonal stress. <laughs> It ripped nicely. <sighs> there are many learned estheticians holding PhDs from NYU in cinema studies. Each one wrote a book, and they, they keep writing these books, just to prove to each other perhaps how smart they are. Their writings contain many, many Latin and Greek words. Uh, so this is why you sound profound and uh, real stuff, real study. But what they wrote in all these books, one could summarize quite easily in one word, crap. <laughs> and we all can spell it. None of these cinema PhDs could survive one day in the world if they had to earn their living doing an honest day's work. Later on, I'll mention their names. And those who need telephone numbers, see me upstairs, I'll give you telephone numbers. When they die, and they will die in great pain, <laughs> and slowly, like snakes, they will have a very, very rough time down there. They will be forced to read their own books. <laughs> and books written by their own fellow PhDs. And they will have to explain to each other what the angle of stress is. Or reflexivity in film, from Don Quixote to Jean-Luc Godard. I didn't know Don Quixote made films, but <laughs> I, I didn't read the book, so um, perhaps he did make. Uh, uh, and they will have to do this um, explaining to each other their books forever. And that's, as you know, is eternity. And nobody else will listen to them but themselves. And that's hell. Not even Dante envisioned anything like this. This is their own creation here. Uh, of course, I speak badly of some of these people. Some of them I know. But they are parasites. They are not needed for the cinema to survive or to flourish, nor literature or poetry or music or any other art. These books are not wanted by filmmakers. They take joy out of film watching. They stifle filmmaking. 
they don't deserve to live. Also, I think there has been too much talk about art. I would like to bring back Dada and Fluxus back, and uh, let's have some, some fun sometimes. We are too serious. Also, let's remember that art is not necessary for survival. is um, decadence. Uh, it's a word that uh, communist Soviet Russia loved to use it. Decadence. America was a decadent society. Uh, see, when people have nothing to do and they stop making ropes, that's where the problem is. <laughs> when not, if you make ropes, you don't have leisure time. You make ropes. All <laughs> so uh, people stop making ropes, and uh, they would sit around, nothing to do. They say, oh, let's make art. <laughs> so they start making art. What are you doing today? I'm going to make some art. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. So, you should make ropes. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's working again. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, 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 look at the, the, the whole history of ours. <laughs> Whenever... Uh, so the the and stage, they started producing art. And that's, of course, uh, indicated at the end of that civilization. Right? <laughs> when you start making art, I have to go and have to excavate and find out what the hell happened to that. All <laughs> well, that remains is art. Civilization is gone. <laughs> Let's see if you recognize these names. This is a test. David Hancock, Paul Schronder, Daniel De Dabrowski, Joel Gould, and Bill Henderson. I bet nobody knows those names. I don't recognize them either. <laughs> In 1975, Guggenheim Foundation recognized these people as the most prominent filmmakers in the United States. Today, after 25 years, 
No, I didn't know their names. And uh, they produce nothing. I have some film journal. Forgotten. All together, they received over eight hundred thousand dollars in grants to make more film. Journal. Today, every college and university grinds up hundreds and thousands and thousands of independent filmmakers. They are known as. This very mm -hmm. moment, there must be at least hundred thousand students in the country. Enroll in various filmmaking classes. Everybody wants to be independent or dependent filmmakers. <coughs> I think there might be more than that, I'm sure. And what about the other countries? When I came to the States, uh, to be exact, there were only six independent filmmakers outside of Hollywood. Maya there, the, the big mama of the uh, American avant-garde, Curtis Harrington, Sidney Peterson, Frank Stauffer, and Gregory Markopoulos, and later Kenneth Anger came in. That, that was the independent cinema scene in this country. Six people. Today, there are so many independent filmmakers They created properties to distribute their own films. And in New York, there is a filmmaker's property that lists all these films here. There's over 600 filmmakers. Canyon Cinema in San Francisco, over 800 filmmakers listing their films for distribution. And uh, many of these, they are available for rental. I would say that 99.99% of these films have never been rented by anyone. Except they were seen only by the filmmakers and two or four of their friends. <coughs> In the beginning of the avant-garde, or on the ground and then whatever personal cinema, whatever title they had, we had no help. One other way we did make films. Uh, when my brother, Jonas, and myself were making our first film, Young <laughs> TV, we kept our exposed film under the bed for almost six months until we got enough money processing. So we made deals with labs that they would defer the payment until we made money. Uh, and uh, it took us two years to shoot the film. Our actors got old and shooting a film out of sequence. So the our actors sometimes were cold and sometimes younger throughout the film. It was interesting. And it was cinema. And the book, we were hungry, of course. Our feet were still coming out. My dentist, Dr. Schrader, who was also the dean of uh, dentistry school at NYU, he took colored pictures of my mouth. And uh, he showed them to his students. <laughs> so he's a great filmmaker. None of his students changed their minds. They all went to the dentist. Nobody. <clears throat> of course, the first thing uh, the filmmaker loses is his teeth. So, if you want to be a filmmaker, you better have good teeth because nobody will take care of you. Today, of course, it's very easy to be an artist. You pluck a guitar, you are a musician. The drum, that's easy. A monkey can do that. So, I put a couple words together, uh, pick up a guitar, and uh, <coughs> repeat the words 50 times. I have no satisfaction, and you are great. <coughs> we have musicians at the bar, even music majors who cannot read music. 
<laughs> we have students who want to be writers have never read anything about world literature. And we have filmmakers and scriptwriters who found that it was made more than 10 years ago. All they have seen teenage horror movies. Oh gosh, you learn how to just how to use the camera and you're um, film artist, video camera, on the video artist, which is oxymoron. <coughs> and the poet is very easy. Just write something obscure, and nobody will understand you, and you'll be a poet. <laughs> For years now, we had this explosion, explosion of art making. I think this is a sure sign that the Western civilization is on the decline. We are in decadence. Since we are in the decline stage right now, so I'm all for giving the last kick. Yes, <laughs> Colleges are very good at um, encouraging you to make Art, I want to say chunk. Art. They don't use the chunk. Art. Capital letter. Walk into practice center anytime. Everybody's making money. Film center? Mm, look at it. Everybody's busy, busy, busy. Art. Video art. And we have theater, dancers. Musicians, the bar. We have more art makers, the bar, than the people who feed us. It's very difficult to spit any place today. <laughs> you might hit an artist. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of that is be careful where you spit. <laughs> The film department is guilty of that. Some of our professors encourage you to make art. Not me. I tell my students to change majors to PNG. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll write this recommendation. <laughs> or to Helen Z. Battistoni. <laughs> Don't do real estate. Better chance. <clears throat> we have an industry of art. Thousands upon thousands of foundations. I don't have the, the books, but imagine a telephone book. Four of these books would be very close to what the foundation catalogs look like. Foundations that give money, millions of dollars every year, for everything. If you want to study the swamplands of Poland, you get a grant for it. But they have always clauses that are not Ukrainian. Something like that. If you want to make film, film about uh, Portuguese uh, wine smugglers, there's money. They're very, very specific grants. But they thousands of them. And we have six people at part employed with administration who can search the catalogs and find whatever, whatever you want. They'll find you five or six foundations that will give you money. Besides that, we have federal money, state money, municipal money, county money, village money. It's just everybody's supporting right now. We have so much encouragement to make junk art. That's uh, it's, it's frightening. It's frightening. Yeah. Every cigarette company gives us thousands of dollars. Even our own music festival supported by cigarette money. Part of it. Also, we have the uh, art class. Now we have art classes for adults. We have art classes for guitar. Art is therapy. Art for the poor. All this obsession with art, I don't know. <coughs> There are brochures without art made easy and easy steps. 
<coughs> some of my own film students come to me who haven't put two splices together yet. So do you know any foundation that I could apply for them? Get out. Get out. There are, there are two theories it's about starving artists and the poor artists. And when I see these well-fed <coughs> uh, foundation granted artists producing nothing but junk, I'm all for starving artists. I think they, they did something in the past. And they, they work all so hard. saturation of art <coughs> and literature everywhere. And in spite of all the support for the past 25 years, few truly great filmmakers emerge. It's not much. It seems that the experimental independent cinema is getting too much money, too much attention, and it's easy to get it. We have few filmmakers in the States that are prom promising, but none of them are great. It's nothing to compare with Maya Dare and Paul Stanton and Vanity and Tango and other pioneers of American avant-garde cinema who work without hands. Many mediocre filmmakers which are supported by grants today but have never made films. <clears throat> and never been recognized as filmmakers. But because of the money, they keep making films and making films and making films and get them off them. A true story. That was my heart. It's a true story. Some of you filmmakers will recognize the name. E. Adam Sidney. He has a couple of PhDs. Actually, he and I started a film department here about 30 years ago. He tells great, great Irish stories. And he can do the action for it. Years back, he worked in anthology film archives with my brother. And uh, so it happens that from Moscow, they received a feature length film, 35 millimeter. It's the Nigra by uh, Davchenko. Came in on nine regions. The big, it says, 35 millimeter. Uh, this is a very rare film, and this is the only print at that time was in this country. But Russians are different than us. Instead of numbering films one, two, three, etc., they wrote in words. I didn't watch it here. Yeah. Um, and um, Piano Sidney, who was also a professor at NYU, studied cinema studies. And NYU cinema studies specialized in Russian cinema. And none of them speak Russian, of course. And P. Adams was so happy to have this film. He showed to his students over and over. And there was one student, a woman student, who decided to write a PhD thesis on the, and I have the title of it, Complexity of Dramatic Structure of Stenigar. Because the film was very complex. Nobody could understand what the hell is going on. <laughs> and um, since there were intertitles in Russian, um, she didn't understand Russian, so she got somebody who really spoke Russian, understood Russian, real Russian, not the NYU student. So this person translated the titles and they said, something wrong with this movie. Let me look at the reads. Happened was that reels were being projected in the wrong order. Four, seven, one, three, etc. The film was projected in a proper order from one to nine. It was a simple fairy tale, a beautiful photograph. So the woman was in tears. <laughs> <laughs> Two years of complexity. Was not there. <laughs> <laughs> 200 pages 
<laughs> Every time I mention this to Piazza Sydney, he sort of uh, changes the subject. <laughs> oh, have you heard this? How did you That was a downfall. Uh, not long ago, I did meet this woman. She is no longer in cinema studies. She is in the real estate. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing very well. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> yes, yeah. as you were coming in, you picked up a piece of paper called Movie Movie. That was originally printed in um, the New Yorker magazine. Every word in that page there is a movie title. It's a very clever, tour de force writing, and it tells a story by using movie titles only. Read it again if you didn't know it. That was all about it. Very, very clever. <laughs> Interesting piece of writing there. And um, um, as I said, that we'll not meet here uh, for two weeks. Also, there's no midterm. That's another break for you. And when time comes for the final, I'll start talking to you way ahead what the final is going to be. But right now, there's no midterm, you, will, you all will receive identical credit sheets, have the right credit sheets, that will say because so this and that and that, uh, there's no grade. You will receive fast grade, but you have to give some kind of a grade to satisfy the administration. But um, about the final, we'll talk about it. Uh, I'll give you some hints later on. <laughs> So now we'll see a movie that normally is not shown at the halls of Academy. In my class, you will see anything like this. It's a movie that verges on being stupid. <laughs> One false step, and you're stupid. But it never makes that step. And I love this movie. I've seen it about 20 times, and I'll see it once more tonight. And it's, uh, uh, in a foreign language, but without subtitles. Uh, <laughs> you will understand only six words. Uh, back up and some other words. Uh, uh, so, before I go, I'll just find a few more spans. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, spans. Observe. Okay, here you are, it's all yours. Uh.